Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video I wanted to do something a little bit different, and rather than talking about a particular ship, fit or specific piece of content, I wanted to guide you through the steps to get started as an explorer, kind of a career guide. Why I think exploration is a great start for new pilots, how you get started with exploration, how you then expand beyond that, and what kind of routes exploration can lead you down in the future. This was a topic that was suggested to me by Chicken, so big thank you and shout out there for this idea. It's a new type of video for me, so I do hope I managed to get my points across fairly succinctly and clearly. Now, because I've covered a lot of the bits and pieces, the minutia, I suppose, of this topic in other videos, there will be a lot of points throughout this where I pause and kind of say, go watch this video for more information or that video for more. This isn't me trying to just promote my own content. It's a case of I'm putting this video forth and I don't want to double up for those of you who've already watched that, but I do want to explain that full detailed guides are there for those of you who need it. Now, I'm going to be showcasing this with a Minmatar probe on screen right now, but the information that we're going to talk about is going to work whether you've rolled Minmatar, whether you went Amar Galente or Kaldari. There's very little difference between your starting as to where that can lead you. It's just a few minor skills here and there, depending on where you decide to go with that. Now, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a full-on understanding of how to get started as an explorer and then where this can lead you going forward. And if you do find it useful, then please hit like on the video and drop a comment down below. Both those things help me out massively by kind of recommending my content on YouTube to other players. And of course, if you know anyone else who wants to get started in exploration, link them this video, share it. Sharing is caring, as they say. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this kind of content financially, I've got a Patreon page, a PayPal tip jar, and a Redbubble merchandise store. And there are two links that might really help you out as an EVE Online player as well. In the description, you can find a link that'll take you through to my referral code. If that's the ref first referral code you've ever used, doesn't matter how old your account is, you get 1 million free skill points, and it does give me a minor kickback as well, so thank you very much. And you can also come join the Catskull Community Discord. Excellent place to meet a bunch of like-minded EVE Online players, chat with people about the game, talk with me directly, and if you are interested in joining the Catskull Cartel Corporation in-game, that's where you apply as well. So do hit that up in the comment in the uh, description down below. All of that said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about the Explorer career path, how to get started, how to progress, and where this can lead you. Now, as with any of the career paths, the best place to get started is of course the career agent missions. After the tutorial, you'll be dropped off in one of your race's three starting systems. There'll be career agents that teach you everything from how to be an enforcer, soldier of fortune, industrialist, and explorer. I do strongly recommend running all of those missions, all of the career agent mission lines, and probably doing them multiple times through your different areas. If you've done all of the ones in the particular system you're in, every single one of the races does have three different hubs that you can go to, and so you can do those missions again. that will get you a load of ships, a load of ISK, some skill books, modules, things like that to get you started, and having done it all three times over, it should be pretty much ingrained in your head. That said, if you have forgotten a lot of it, I do have a video on basic scanning and one on basic hacking as well, just to get you started with exploration as a concept. Once the career agent missions are done, however, your next port of call is the Air Career Program. And if you click into this, it'll give you this wheel here. Again, I've done a full video detailing how this all works, um, so do check that out as well. I'll put links in the description for all these videos if I can't get cards going along the top. This is going to show you everything, or rather the basics of getting started as an explorer, introduce you to some new types of content, and get you to sort of undock and get out there and give it a go. A lot of this is stuff that perhaps you might not have considered otherwise. It's very easy in any of the career paths to kind of go, oh well, for Enforcer for example, to undock and just start doing agency missions and go, oh well, this is what uh, you know being an Enforcer is about. That's not true. There is so much more content beyond what the game will initially introduce you to. That's where the Air Career Program comes in. Like here at the top, we have the Career Agent missions, which hopefully you should have done by this point and you'll have got all of the rewards for completing all of these. That's a great start. You'll probably have a load of the scanning bits here ticked off. You probably even have some of the hacking bits ticked off as well. Some of these containers, hopefully you have hacked them, you've got into them, you've got a basic understanding of how that works. 
You may even have ticked off some of the wormholes, gas sites, combat sites, this kind of stuff as well. And it's worth going in that I will go back and do this Nullsec one eventually. I just don't tend to be in Nullsec much because, well, the exact content I'm looking for tends to spawn in wormholes. So I don't really need to go to Nullsec because it's the same content for me. But there we go. Let's not get into that one. You can work your way around this and it'll give you an excellent start and an idea of the kind of content you can get as a dedicated explorer. But that's not the the be all and end all of it. As anyone who's ever jumped into a wormhole and found a forgotten or unsecured site will tell you. You can warp to one of those sites in a tier one explorer and you will get blapped off the grid fairly quickly. If you're new to exploring, as I talk about in the scanning and hacking video, you're probably looking for safe sites first of all. That is data sites that are named something like local, regional or central, and relic sites that are named something like crumbling, ruined and decayed. Those will be your starting points for that kind of safe hacking content. You may come across things like sleeper caches, sleeper caches, which I've talked about in other videos as well. You may find a covert research facility or ghost site. Again, I've got a video on that as well. And I've talked about doing some of those unsecured and forgotten sites as well, but those really do require a combat vessel. And starting off as an explorer, you can very easily just go deep into exploration and focus exactly on that. I know a lot of folks in Catskull did exactly that. Started off as just an explorer, finding safe relic and data sites and that's where they started to amass their first fortune. They do the safe sites in like a Tech 1 Explorer while they're skilling into something like an Astero or a Tech 2 and we'll talk more about ships in a moment but it's a good starting point whilst you're building those skills up. And then once those skills are built up and you're running all those sites really quite comfortably, you can start cross training into some of the more combat oriented or oriented explorer vessels that will then take you into things like unsecured and forgotten sites. You can start clearing those and hacking those as well. And as you do this, you'll become more and more familiar with the nuances of exploration and hacking. And this will lead you to be more comfortable with things like those sleeper caches, the CSS sites and the good old um, Ghost sites, great fun those things, but can be very daunting to a new player because you need to have high skills and be good at the hacking minigame. Now that brings us nicely to the discussion of skills, right? Well, let's open up the skill window and we can talk about this. Now, once you're in the skill window, if you come across the skill plans at the top left, go to Explorer and then pick whichever race you've started as, you will have some skill plans here, Air Minmatar Explorer and Minmatar Treasure Hunter. Now, these are not a bad starting point. If you go ahead and open one of these up and have a look at the skill plan contents, you'll see a list of different skills that you can train into here that will get you off the ground. Some of these I honestly would delete from that queue. You're probably not going to need salvaging skills unless that's something you really specifically want to go into as a secondary. I do know quite a few people who go exploring with a ship like, for example, the Metamorphosis with a combat scanner fitted as well so they can do probe scanning and combat scan and probing, combat probe scanning, whichever way around you want to say that and they will scan down the safe sites, which they can then hack into with their relic and data analyzers. They might even spot some wrecks that they then warp to and salvage those. So there is that sort of little bit of crossover there. And certainly when you're doing the combat-based exploration sites, well, being able to salvage the containers, it's all additional isk. And I know people say, oh, you're often better just going for another site and trying to find another site, but any explorer will tell you that you can sometimes go hours upon hours with not actually finding any sites. Don't be disheartened by that, we all go through it. You might go through three or four wormholes and find no safe relic or data sites at all, then suddenly you'll find a system that's got 12 in. It happens to us all. So having the sort of the flexibility to do other content can be really beneficial. To start off with though, you're gonna be wanting just to build up those scanning skills. And from there, well, Content is what you make it. Yeah, of course, most explorers will tell you that they make their money mainly by going out and doing relic and data sites, for example. But if you're in a wormhole corp, you may find that you are paid for your skills finding content for other people. You're scanning down gas sites for the gas miners to find the gas huffers. They're gonna warp into those sites, but they need you to scan it down first. Or you yourself might decide that actually, you quite enjoy gas huffing. I mean, heck, if I go back into the air career program, scanning, scanning down gas sites is one of the things for the air career exploration, right? So 
why not do that? If you decide that actually gaslights look interesting, then yeah, absolutely. Into this skill queue, you're gonna to want to add some of your gas huffing skills and go watch one of my videos on how to set up something like a venture or a prospect to go gas huffing. You see what I mean about exploration being a great sort of springboard into other types of content. Beyond even that, you may find that your corporation is willing to pay you to be a scout for haulers, to sort of move ahead of the systems and check that those are clear. You may find that if you're in a wormhole corp, you may even be offered payment for your services, scanning down the different connections and updating tripwire or pathfinder, this kind of thing, finding content for your corporation to run. You may not be running that content yourself, but you're scanning it down, finding it for them. I have, for example, a cheetah that is fit for me to go relic and data site uh, scanning, but I also have one that is just undocked for when I want to scan down all the wormhole connections around me. It's got faster scan times, faster movement, that kind of thing. It's all about just finding that information for my corporation to run that kind of content. Of course, I myself can then swap back into a different ship. If I find a load of, say, data and relic sites, I can swap into a hacking ship and go and clear those. If I find a load of gas sites, I can swap into a prospect and go off and huff those. It's a great starting point for all of that. But once you've done this skill plan, what do you do from there? Well, that is gonna depend entirely what you're looking for. If you go into the skill catalog, then of course the scanning section is going to be vitally important to you. And the first thing you are going to want to max out here is astrometrics. Astrometrics gives you a reduction to uh, your scan deviation, a reduction to scan probe scan time, and an increase to scan strength. Your first goal in this game is to get your scanner the ability to scan at 95 scan strength. To find this, just as a brief aside, if we open up the fitting window here and then we mouse over the core probe launcher, look for where it says base sensor strength. You want that to be at least 95. 95 is the gravy point. Anything above 80 is technically okay. You can theoretically scan down every site with base sensor strength of 80, but it's hard to do and it's going to require some really finicky probe placements in certain situations. What is much better is getting it to at least 95. 95 is your magic number and you can do this as we talk about in the how to fit whichever explorer ship you have video you can do this in numerous different ways obviously upgrading the core probe launcher one to a core probe launcher two or a sister's core probe launcher changing from core scanner probe ones to sister's core scanner probes that those are great ways to get your base sensor strength up the ship you're using can have gravity capacitor upgrades fitted you can even use range finding arrays to increase that as well and so that is going to be how you reach that magic number of 95 five. Using your astrometric skill, getting that to at least four as quickly as possible is going to be a great start to that. And if you're going to be doing the relic and data sites, you're going to want hacking and archaeology to at least four as well, ideally getting those up to five as quickly as possible so that you can use the relic analyzer and data analyzer two modules. Those two modules will change the game for you as a hacker archaeologist because you'll be so much more equipped to get into those different containers. You'll have better strength, better cohesion. They are just vastly superior modules that will unlock a wide variety of content for you to do. Like seriously, don't even consider a ghost site until you have hacking at five. You just will not be able to do it properly. So yeah, strongly recommend getting those up. Once those three skills are up, you can kind of be dabbling in acquisition, pinpointing, and range finding en route a little bit, because of course the fifth level of astrometrics, hacking, and archaeology are long skill trains. You can dabble into acquisition, pinpointing, and range finding a bit. I would probably still get archaeology and hacking to five first, then come back, top these up, and then go into astrometrics five before getting these up. These are essentially the astrometric skill, but spread out. It's the astrometric skill again, but then spread out. So if you've got astrometrics five, you're going to have 25% better scan strength, 25% reduction to scan deviation, 25% reduction to scan time. Whereas if you then have these to five, you've got an additional 25% probe strength, an additional 25% reduction to deviation, and an additional 25% reduction to scan time. They're not as vital. Certainly, the way I've always done this is I get astrometrics to four, I get hacking and archaeology to five, I then get these to three, then astrometrics to five, range finding to five, and then bring up the other two after that, because they're just not as important. They're more a quality of life, faster scan than they are actually fixing things. 
Now, of course, if you've looked into things like neural remapping, then these skills are all going to use intelligence and memory. So if you want to remap neurally into intelligence and memory, you will be able to skill those up a little bit faster too. And that might be worth doing whilst exploration is your big focus. Now, whilst doing all of this, what ships are you going to be flying? Well, I've done an entire video on how to pick the best explorer for you, where we talk about where to get started and where to go from there. But if you're a Mimitar explorer, you're going to start with a probe. If you're a Kaldari explorer, you're probably starting with a Heron. If you're a Ma, you're probably going to start with a Magnate. And if you are a Galenta, you're going to start with an Imacus. From there, though, it is kind of up to you. If you decide you really like the look of the probe, for example, but you rolled a Ma, then it's not difficult to train Min Matar frigate up to whatever skill you need, like four or five, preferably to five. They're frigate skills. They're not a huge gateway, but bear that in mind because whichever one you go for is going to open up different ships. Once you are fairly comfortable using something like the probe, you can upgrade to a probe fleet issue. This is more of a faction warfare combat oriented vessel. I don't tend to use it and I don't tend to recommend it for dedicated scanners because you're very rarely going to be in a combat situation. Your main purpose is to get in, hack and get out. If you see anything on D-Scan or anything warps in on you, your main survival is to run away. It's why I don't tend to use combat drones in any of my explorers, because it just makes it more expensive. It's why I don't bother with tank or things like that. Your job is to run the hell away. Once you're fairly comfortable with those skills, however, and once you've got like the frigate skill to five, you can start training into Covert Ops. Covert Ops will unlock things like the Cheetah for the Mimitar Republic, the Helios for the Galente Federation, the Buzzard for the Kaldari State, and the Anathema for the Amar Empire. These are going to want you to have the Covert Ops skill to at least four, ideally before you move into them, but that is also going to allow you to start using Covert Ops cloaking devices. Now, one discussion I had on Reddit a while ago was that, oh, exploration is pointless, if you're not uh, a mega, especially in wormholes, because you don't have the cloak. You don't need the cloak to survive. I used to fly with Signal Cartel back in the day, and certainly if you are in interested in pure on exploration, and that is your thing in EVE Online, then give that Signal Cartel a strong checkout. Those guys do fantastic work. They are led by the frankly legendary Cartier SA and some absolutely exceptional pirates like Priest Nari, Tamiyo. These are great people who are part of Signal Cartel. I do miss flying with those guys sometimes. I'm happy to be in Cat's Gold, but if any of you are watching this, seriously, big shout out. I miss flying with you folks. You were awesome and taught me so, so much, and they will teach you so, so much if you were to join them. Um, it is strongly recommended, though, that, yeah, you get a cloaking device when you can, but if you've spent time, like I did when I joined Signal Cartel, as an alpha flying a probe around, I couldn't use a covert ops cloak on a probe, yet I was flying through Thera and other wormholes, scanning them down, mapping them, hacking and exploring, and I barely ever lost a ship. If you can learn to survive without the Covert Ops Cloak, without the Interdiction Nullifier, then by time you have a ship that can use those, you are frankly uncatchable. This is also why I don't really recommend the Astero all that much. Like, I know a lot of people swear by the Astero, but first of all, you're going to need both Galente and Amar Frigate bonuses. You're then probably just still going to want the Covert Ops skill and all of that as well. And if you're a dedicated explorer who has Amar Frigate 5, I kind of think the Anathema is better than the Astero. The Astero to me is very much a PvP ship that preys on other explorers. I know a lot of explorers swear by the Astero, but simply put, if you've got a Mar Frigate 5 or Galente Frigate 5 and you've got good covert ops skills, you're better off with the Anathema or the Helios. It's just going to serve you better for the most part, unless you really, really want to go PvPing. Again, I find that people tend to take the, the the Astero and split it in half. They fit it so that it's half exploration, half PvP. And that just means you die to a dedicated PvPer and you waste time whilst scanning as well. So it doesn't really work out beneficial in my mind, but different strokes for different folks. You might decide that's exactly what you want. You want to just be able to prey on the helpless uh, explorers that you can catch. It gives you a little bit of PvP opportunity. And if you're in a site and you find someone else is trying to hack that site, well, you've got the teeth to shoot them away. 
We should probably also talk about the Stratios. Stratios is a really niche ship that a lot of people look at and go, oh, that's great for exploration. Yeah, first of all, please just pretend it doesn't have medium energy turret skills. Like, I don't ever see the point in fitting medium energy turrets to a Stratios if you are at all minded for exploration. It's not a damage bonus, it's just optimal range. It's not going to help you all that much. You can do much better things with the Stratios. Now, I've actually run a Stratios through C5 unsafe sites and hacked them successfully for big isk. You can do that with a Stratios. You can also tank these to hell and back to be able to run ghost sites and actually survive the explosion. I've seen people do the same with a Stratios or a Gnosis, where they warp a fleet of them in, like four or five of them, into a ghost site at the same time. Everyone goes after a container, they then all warp off safely. That's another great way to do that because you don't have to worry about someone accidentally triggering the explosion and you all losing your ship. A, a brief aside should be also given out then, as I said, to the Gnosis. That can have its niche place as a scanning ship um, in certain situations. I don't recommend it as a base scanner, same as I don't really recommend the Sunasis. It kind of makes up for the lack of skills, but it doesn't do what you need to, and I'd rather just focus on the skills, if that makes sense. Same with the Metamorphosis, though. Metamorphosis is actually genuinely a good ship if you have one. That can be an excellent scanning ship if it fits your needs. What about combat scanning though? I've mentioned those unsecured um, and fortification, uh, the unsecured and forgotten sites. Well, that's where something like a Tech 3 strategic cruiser comes in the Loki, the Proteus, the Legion, or the Tengu. You can fit those to be cloaky and have the scanning bonuses. They can hack those sites up to C2 and still run them, clear them comfortably of all of the enemies in them, then still have the capability to hack the sites as well. I've got a Tengu that I use primarily for doing that. Recently sold that off. I now have a Loki that does it. The Tengu's featured in the video. The Loki might be in a video by the time you're watching this. Do check that out. I haven't made it at the time of me making this one, but it's a Loki that can run C1 and C2 um, unsecured and forgotten sites, clear those out, and then um, hack the containers afterwards. Also, great little ships if you want to clear out gas sites, for example, you can scan down the gas site, warp into it with your Loki, Tengu, Legion, or Proteus, clear out all of the rats in there, and then suddenly all of your huffers can come back in and huff away to their heart's content. Now, there are probably some other ships around the ship tree that are pretty niche for this as well. With good enough skills, you can actually fit, say, a Vagabond to have good scanning skills and be able to run every single one of the C3 sites, including the Forgotten and the Unsecured. Recently done a video on exactly that. Great ship for doing that kind of thing. And you might find there are other vessels that if you've got good enough skills to be able to scan those sites down, well, why not get in there and run them? Have a whale of a time. But your main priority is going to be looking at the different frigates, the Tech 1 Explorers, the Tech 2 two covert ops, and then possibly the Tech 3 strategic cruisers. You might go into the Sisters of Eve branch at that point as well, but it's kind of entirely up to you at that point in time. Depends on where you want to go, what your skills are based around, and how you think you will best benefit, or how your corp will best benefit from those skills. In addition, it's worth mentioning that once you've got good scanning and exploration skills, not only are you going to have that sort of survival instinct, which is going to really help you out as an industrialist if you do go down, say, the gas huffing or mining routes, um, because you've just got that survival instinct of running away from anything and knowing how to survive, you can also do some really cool things like getting into stealth bombers. Stealth bombers can be great fun in fleets if you want to take a group of those out, scan things down, warp onto an enemy, blow it the hell up, and then warp off safely. You can have good fun doing that kind of stuff. And if you're getting better at scanning and hacking and moving around cloakily, well, even then, any ship really becomes amazing in a wormhole scenario. It's not just the Tech 3 strategic cruisers. I've done an entire series on the heavy assault cruisers and how you can run those through wormholes. It... <sighs> I genuinely feel that exploration is a brilliant way to start off as an alpha pilot because it's fairly low skill intensity. You learn a lot of basic survival skills doing it. You can make good isk doing it. And then it branches out into so many different types of content. I would argue that most of our serious pilots in Catskull have a strong foundation in scanning and exploration. They understand how to scan things down quickly and efficiently. They have the ability to hack into sites quickly and efficiently as well. That's probably where most of them started off with making their first fortunes. Then as time has gone on, they've expanded those skills into bigger, more expensive ships that can run higher tier content. But because they've got those that strong foundation of survival, 
from scanning and exploration, they don't tend to lose their ships as quickly as perhaps some of the more combat friendly pilots do. I know a lot of folks start off with something like L3 missions and then move into wormholes. They don't necessarily have that same tier of survival skills. Not everyone by any stretch. I'm not saying that, you know, you're an idiot if you've just been doing that. But I tend to find that a lot of the people who come into J space, for example, having done nothing but agent missions in high sec, they don't have that same survival instinct that exploration will have taught you from an early age on your character. Maybe that's just me being biased though. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Again, this is a bit of a free form video, just me talking about a career path, why I like it, how to get started with it, how to progress with it and where it can lead you. And hopefully that's given you some ideas. Hopefully as well, you've got a list of new videos to watch that will teach you all of those different skills um, for exploration and hacking. As a final point on that one, just because it's a video I haven't mentioned and a lot of people have missed, if you looked at the fit earlier, you may notice I've got no propulsion module on my uh, exploration frigate at all. This is honestly the kind of fit that I recommend. I don't recommend a propulsion module because if you're doing hacking and exploration right, you will never need it, especially once you're capable of running things like an interdiction nullifier. If you're in low sec or high sec, you don't need a propulsion module. It's as simple as that. You can warp out of those into and out of sites really quickly. You should be setting up a perch and go watch that video on how to set up a perch. It's gonna mean you're slow boating around far less, makes you much harder to tackle and catch. If you can get into the habit of setting up perches, by the time you can run a Covert Ops Explorer, you are basically untouchable. And it is such a power move to have someone drop in on you and you just warp out while giving them the middle finger laughing all the way. So yeah. I don't tend to fit propulsion modules. In fact, the only ship, the only explorer I have a propulsion module fitted to is the one that I do wormhole scanning with. And that's because I tend to jump through um, into a new system that I'm gonna scan. And then I drift off, activate the uh, micro warp drive and then put on the cloak. This means by the time I finished scanning the system down, I'm so far away from the main hole that I can start setting up pings and safes and things around there as well. That's the only reason I ever really recommend a propulsion unit on an explorer. Some of you may disagree. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Thank you ever so much for watching this one right the way through to the end. As I said, unusual bit of content for me. Give me some feedback on this one. Positive, negative, constructive. Just give me feedback. Let me know how you get on. Otherwise, folks, thank you for listening to me ramble on about exploration. The career path I personally think is the best and most rewarding in the entire of EVE. But there is personal bias involved there. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.